Hi, it was recently brought up to me that um, I have not redone the instructional videos in a while with the current version of Moodle, so I thought I would redo the level one and level two certification videos. This is on level one teacher activities. Activities as opposed to resources are things that students can do or accomplish and are then optionally automatically put in your gradebook uh, that you can grade. Um, there are only three activities. In fact, the first one is the biggest one that new teachers use, and that is an assignment. Uh, we're going to go through all three of these. Assignments are just that. Assignments that you give students either in class, traditional take home, and activities that you can grade and do. Those can be ones that they type online in Moodle, they submit a um, digital file online in Moodle, or a traditional one they turn in, but that's how they see what the assignment is, and that's where you put the grade in the assignment itself. Um, feedback are best said as um, surveys. It's a way for you to get feedback from your students. I use feedbacks in my class and every single module to get um, student feedback on every spot along the course. And then the last one that we're going to go over today is the quiz module. Uh, quizzes are online quizzes. So let's get started on those. Now, by the way, activities are slightly more different than and difficult than resources because they're things to do, not just things to show students. So the first one we're going to do is the assignment. Okay, here we are in our example class, and we're going to not add assignments in our class information. Assignments are things that they're going to do. So we're going to start out with topic number two and call that chapter one in our course. Uh, and by the way, these can be moved around at any time and they can be named at any time. We're going to go ahead and turn editing on and go to topic two. And you can see everything else disappears. So first of all, we're going to name this topic. We need to have all of our topics named in our class so that students can easily find where we're going. All you have to do to do that is click the little pencil and we're going to type chapter one. And you might want to put what chapter one's about. I'm just going to leave this chapter one since it's all made up anyway. And it says escape to cancel, enter when finished. If you hit anything other than enter, you didn't make the change. So I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard, and now this is chapter one. It still does not show up in my table of contents because I haven't actually added anything. Okay, again, we're going to go down here to add an activity or resource, and we have three activities that we're learning about today, and the first one is the assignment. So when I click assignment, got a bunch of text here that explains what it is. If I ever want to look, I'm going to go ahead and say add. Now, like I said before, you get used to what the Moodle boxes look like. They're all the same. The first thing is, what does this assignment look like? Okay, I'm going to say um, chapter one, six. Okay, so first of all, this is what the link looks like. And it's also what's going to show up in my gradebook. So I have told staff members that you may want to shorten it and come up with a way that students are used to seeing it. Just CH1 gets the same idea and I let all my students know those are chapter one. I also might want to change it through to probs one through six. Again, shorter in my gradebook. My gradebook can get really wide when I look at it digitally. And it's an assignment, so it's going to go in my gradebook. Okay, so that's what they see. Now down here in description, description is not an asterisk item. I don't have to type it in there. If it's an assignment that I want students to read what the assignment is, then I have to type something there. Now I can copy and paste it or I can just type it in. I'm going to type it in. Please read. Okay, so I'm going to put please read the textbook pages one through oops 20. Do the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, so that's what they're going to do. The question then is how are they going to submit it? There are three ways to have submissions done in Moodle. Number one is traditional. They're going to turn it in at the front of the class. Turn in. Okay, so if I'm doing a traditional, I'm just turning it in. 
turn it into the box in the front of the class and turn into my inbox at the front. Oh, that's supposed to be of the class. You should put it in the correct. This is a traditional one. Um, if I go down here, then all I'm going to do is this. First of all, when is it due? I'm going to click the calendar and say that it's due. Sure, I'll leave it right there. Now, by having a due date, and I understand that especially in the high school, due dates are brown and orange, brown and orange. I always put it on the first day and explain to my kids that if you're an orange student, obviously it's not due on the 31st, it's due on February 1st, but that's the soonest that anyone should have it due. Okay, the next thing is the submission types. I'm unchecking everything. This is an online text, meaning they're going to type something. This is a file submission, meaning they're going to turn something in. And I'm saying this is a piece of paper they're turning in. The next thing I'm going to go down to is grade. And I'm going to say, what is this worth? In points, and where does it go? In what category? So, hey, this is a homework. They're all worth 10 points in my class. Oops, if I can type. And they go into a category. Ah, we don't have categories set up right, so I'm just going to leave it uncategorized. And we're going to do grading categories in just a second because we have to make sure we get them in the right spot during the school year. I'm done. Save and return to course. That's what it looks like. If they click on it, they get this assignment. It says when it's due. They don't see these things right here. They just see, please turn in that turn it in the front of my class, uh, and that's it for what they see on that section. So we have to make an aside right here. And we have to go into our grade book. We have to make some categories. Um, grade categories are where our grades go. So how do we set up grade categories? I go to gradebook setup, and right now you can see I have my example class, one thing, and a course total. I have to make some categories. So you see right here, I'm going to add a category and I add a category called quarter one. Uh, and it's worth 100 points. So I'm going to hit save changes. I'm also, well, I'm going to hear here, I'm going to make one called quarter two. If I can type, I could put just Q2, I suppose. I'm going to make one called quarter three. Now, as I do, as I make items, I can put them in the quarter. I can make more categories than that. I'm going to add a quarter category called hidden and zeroed, if I can spell. And I'm going to open category total and make that worth zero. That's the zeroed part of it. I'm going to hit save changes. Now, I've got these categories, and I'm going to move them. I'm going to move, quarter one's going to stay where it is. Quarter two is going to go into hidden and zeroed. Quarter three is going to go into, we're assuming it's first quarter right now, hidden and zeroed. And quarter four is going to go into hidden and zeroed. And I'm going to take hidden and zeroed, and I'm going to go over here to edit, and I'm going to say hide. So now, hidden and zeroed is just that, hidden and zeroed. And I've got quarter one that's worth 100 points. And I'm going to stick this hit the up down arrow inside quarter one where my quarter one stuff is going to go now if i go and look at the grade book there's nobody assigned to this class because it's an example but i would see my students and i would see this one item here and i would see the grades uh, available to typed in underneath that i apologize for that aside but when we go to our grade book we have to have the current quarter out here under the class name and all the other quarters inside of hidden and zeroed so that students don't see them and they don't count when they're calculated because the course total right now should only be what's inside quarter one. Okay, so that is an example of an assignment that you just hand in. It's a normal one. Uh, I don't have any of those. There's absolutely nothing that students just hand in. So I'm going to go to the other options for adding an assignment. I'm going to add an activity. I'm going to add an assignment and I'm going to click add. So I'm going to do the same thing. So in this one, I'm saying to read the chapter. I'm going to have them open a Google Doc and answer the questions inside a Google Doc and submit a link to the Google Doc below. So when I go down here, 
Uh, this one's going to be due in February, and we're going to say this one's due February 4th. And this one is going to be an online text. So they're going to have a text window that opens up, and I'm asking them to share it to me and put the link right there so I can just click on those links and read those things that they have submitted. I'm going to go to grade. I'm going to make that one worth 10 points as well, and I'm going to put it inside of quarter one save and return to course and now i've got a second one underneath here i probably work at um standardizing those a little bit so now this time if they click on there they say open a google doc and answer the questions and what does that look like for them? says what to do here's the instructions up top uh they haven't attempted it yet it's not been graded that's when it's due that's how long and here's the ad submission they just click on that they get a box just like ours and they would put the link to their google doc right there inside of that and hit save changes i'm going to add an activity or resource add an assignment add chapter one Okay, so this time I've said read these pages and do the problems in the text area below. So again, I'm turning off file submission. I'm saying online text, which lets them have a text box just like our text box. I'm going to say grade again. I'm going to make this one with 10 points as well. I'm going to also put it in quarter one. Save and return to the course. And so this one, when they click on opens up, read do the problems in the text area below they've not attempted you can see when it's due and i hit add submission and now they would type their answers in here and i'm going to go ahead and do one and he's going to hit save changes now he's already submitted it he can go back in and resub edit this at any time up until the point where i grade it um, and he can also remove it if he's like, ah, I didn't mean to submit that. Okay. And it says you can still make changes to your submission. Okay. So that's what that looks like. That's it for an online. Basically, these two are exactly the same. The difference here is you're typing it here or you're typing it in a Google Doc. Okay. The last one is to submit a file. And um, teachers do this if they're submitting a, a Word an Excel or a PowerPoint um, in their class for a class activity. That's about the only things that you would submit a file for. Uh, and if you're doing Google, if you're using Google Slides or Google um, Numbers or Google Docs, you would do the ones we just showed you, um, that you would just have them submit a link to the file and have it shared to you. So uh, this one is for a computer teacher or teacher doing projects. So I'm going to add an activity or resource, add an assignment again, and click add. And chapter one. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to make them do a PowerPoint to summarize the chapter. Uh, uh, kind of a lame assignment. But anyway, so we'll go on down here. And now we're going to do a file submission. It says maximum number of files. Oh, I only want students to be able to do one. And 250 meg would be huge for that. I'm going to, you don't need to change that. You can leave that alone. Um, and then you go down to grade again. This one's, this one's worth 20 points. And I'm going to say chapter one. And I'm going to say save and return to course. This one then, when they click on it, oh, there's our explanation. They haven't submitted anything yet. I haven't graded anything yet. Here's when it's due in six days and 11 hours. And they would hit add submission. And it has the ability then that they could go and take and drag and drop a file right in there. So once they drag and drop that in there, they hit save. And now they see a link to the file. They've submitted it. And they can always go back and edit and delete this. I can delete it and re-upload something else. But I can only upload one file, so they would have to delete it prior to submitting something else. So I'm right here, and I want to look at this set of problems. It says one person has submitted it, and I'm going to hit View All Submissions. And there I see what he did. And if I hit Grade, then I'm going to see it just the way he put it in there. And I can put a grade in here. And I could also type any comments on it down here. 
And then when I hit save, I can check this box so he gets notified. He'd get an email saying your submission has been graded and, and get all the information emailed to him. Or I can just hit save and I'm done with uh, doing the editing right now. And that's what it looks like when they do it online. When they submit a file, and I say view all submissions, now I actually have a link to that file if I want to open up the link. Or I can hit grade right here and see it right here as well and click on it and open up and edit that link. There's one more thing we can do with this one. So here is that assignment. I have one other option that a lot of teachers don't know about. I can go to edit settings and I can go down to feedback types and say annotate PDF. I'm going to hit save changes, return to course, and I go in and regrade him now. So here is that file as a PDF and I can actually write on the PDF and give comments right here on the PDF if I want to. And you can see that now I have the ability to just, I don't even have to download the PDF or the uh, PowerPoint. It's just turned it into a PDF so that I can grade it or take a look at it right here inside of Moodle without doing the download and open, open that file up. The next one's a feedback. And feedback is, um, like I said, a survey. And I use those. The top of every single one of my chapters in Moodle has the ICANs listed out. And these are the objectives for any particular section. And right underneath that is a self-assessment for my students to answer whether they understand the ICANN or not. There's a bunch of yeses and a couple noes for that particular ICANN. Can you configure BIOS? Can you use BIOS to configure a PC? And that's how many students said yes, and that's how many students said no. That's how I use um, the feedback module. There's tons of ways to use it. There's tons of things you could use it for. It's just a survey, and this is an activity that they do that there's no way to grade, just so you know. So this is a non-graded thing uh, inside your uh, Moodle course. So let's add a survey, or sorry, a feedback into this Moodle class. I'm going to add an activity or resource and pick a feedback. Again, it's explained right there. Add. So what's the feedback called? I don't have to have a description. I don't have to have an availability, but I can if I want people to do it by a certain date. Um, and then um, I can say how, do I want it to be anonymous? Do I want to know who said what? Do I want to allow multiple submissions or is this a one-time feedback? Do I want to get emails every time someone submits? I leave that a no. Um, and do I want to number the questions as they do it? That's a yes or no. And after submission, do I want to give them some message? Show analysis? Mm, nah. Okay, I'm going to go and hey, save and display. So right now there's nothing in it. It's just a blank setup that they would see nothing. I have to then add questions to my survey. So I click edit questions and I can add a question in. There's a number of different kind of questions that you can add. I'm going to go ahead and go to multiple choice. So um, multiple choice, single answer. I can make the, them be vertical or horizontal. Um, hide the not selected. Okay, I'm going to say the answer options are yes and no. And yeah, we'll just leave it at that. And I'm going to say, oh, uh, do not analyze empty. No, hide the no. Okay, so save question. So that's what they get. Did you like this chapter? It's not selected, yes or no. And I can make it so this is required. Okay, so I'm going to hide not selected. Yes, I don't want to do that. Um, and required right up here. So if they take this, they have to answer that question. And I'm going to save changes. So now it just has an empty yes, no. Did you like this chapter? Uh, I got to answer the question. Um, and then I can add more questions. So there's other options there that I only use. 
multiple choice and short answer text and really multiple choice because I want to use it uh, for data right away. But that is the feedback module. Okay, the very last one is the quiz. And the quiz is the one that probably we could spend an hour on on its own um, because there's so many ways you can use the Moodle quiz. There's so many kinds of questions that you could use in Moodle. I'm going to just scratch the surface today with level one, talking about true, false, multiple choice, and matching questions. There are way more than that out there. So if I want to go, I'm going to go back to this class, chapter one, and we're going to do the chapter one um, quiz, test, whatever, assessment at using the quiz module. So I'm going to do a add an activity and do add a quiz and say add. Quizzes are set up in two steps. One step is making the quiz, kind of like the feedback, and then the other step is adding the questions to the quiz. So I'm going to call it chapter one test. Okay, this is where I might say if it's timed, if it's open book, if it's closed book, what materials covered, um, if you'll be able to take it again, any information that I can give them. Um, maybe I make this one open note only. In here, um, so I'm going to go through all these settings because some of these make sense. Timing is if you want Moodle to have a pop-up block that says how much time you have left in the class. Some things I use timing, some things I do not use timing. For formative assessments, I never have timing on there. On summative assessments, I frequently do so they know how much time is left in the class for a chapter test. So if I open timing, um, this is where I can say when the quiz opens, i.e. what I want, where I want it to be on the calendar, I always use this because I wanna make sure students know there's a test. I do not believe in pop quizzes and pop tests uh, of any nature. I think students should know that they're coming. So I go ahead and do that. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and say it's 7 in the morning, and it's going to be February 15th is when this is going to open. Now, that keeps anybody from doing anything in it until February 15th, by the way. I can also say when it closes, don't do that very often because sometimes the student will miss class and then I have to redo it. So I don't use that very often. Time limit is just that. If I want to say, hey, you've got, it's only a couple questions, you've got 10 minutes, and at the end of 10 minutes, it's over. Um, again, don't use that for formative, do use that for summative, never anything that's 10 minutes long, but that's what timing is. Grade is just that. Where's it going to go? It's going to go in quarter one. It's going to be worth 50 points. Um, that's the grade. This, I don't think, belongs in this block, but that's where it is. How many times can they take it? If it's formative in nature, you might want to say unlimited. If it's your summative test, you might want to say once. It's up to you. And you can see it's any number between 1 and 10 and then unlimited. Uh, so you could do any permutation in there. If you do more than one, it says what counts. Um, you could say you could take it twice, twice, but it's the average between the two. Uh, you could say it's the highest grade, first grade, last grade. If you say first grade and let them take it twice, you're mean. Um, but that's what's going to go in the grade book. Um, I always have it as the last attempt. If they start another attempt and they do worse, they got to do it again. Um, but you can see the, the whether I want to do it unlimited, one, two, maybe you'd let them take it again, but it averages them. It's up to you. That's what, how, what that grading is for. Layout is next. It by default already, and you saw, it, when I hit layout, there's nothing there because the layout is pretty much set what we think everyone's going to want but you can hit show more what this is saying is that there's a new page every single question uh, that way if i've got a classroom full of students um, and i randomize the questions uh, then they're also going to be on different questions throughout i don't need to make four versions of the test to make sure students are on the same question i only need one because every student's going to be on a different question because it's random. Uh, navigation method, free or sequential. Default is three, meaning they can go through their test and then go back to questions. Sequential means you move on 
only after you've answered that question. I don't like that, but you can switch it if you want to. That's the layout. Question behavior uh, means deferred feedback means that you don't know whether you got it right or wrong until after um, it's all over. Um, that's normal. Review options. These are automatically already set to say that while you're doing it, you can only see what your attempt is and what points you got on it. You can't see any feedback or what the right answer is um, after you make the attempt. Um, later, it says while the quiz is still open, this is immediately, this is two minutes later, and this is after it's closed. Those review options are probably pretty good for everyone. The only other thing that I would look at is right here. Extra restrictions on attempts. I do use this one all the time. If you want a student to only be able to take the test here at National Trail, under the network address, you type 10.66. That is every computer that connects anywhere at National Trail has an address of 10.66 something. Um, so if you want them to only take it at trail, you put that in there. Um, if you want to enforce a password, so hey, it opens on the February 14th, but you have to be in my room and you have to know the password. Then, and by the way, I always use passwords. Um, then you have to do that. Now, the other caveat there is if it's formative, I don't use a password because I'm already saying you can take it as many times as you want. And I also don't require you to do it at school. These things are for summative quizzes, tests that um, you can't retake that I put at the end of the chapter. That's when I add a password and I can always see what the password is. And when I add the network address to make sure they take it in my classroom in front of me. Now, password I can change any time. So I give, a, I give the password out to my second block class. Everyone's in the quiz and I go and change the password so that they can't tell somebody at home what the password is and they can take it a day early I don't have brown and oranges, but you probably do. So that's why you might want to do that. Uh, that one I definitely do. So once I have all those things set, I hit save and display. And all I've got is, oops, I didn't fill something out. Oh, the grade to pass must be greater than the possible grade. Oh, I wasn't supposed to put that in there. That's not the grade I meant to put in there. Okay, so save and display. I'll show you where the grade is. So it's set up. It says how it's set up. I got two attempts. It's going to average the grade. Um, I don't do that, by the way, but let's say you did. Um, but there's no questions in the quiz. So that's stage one. Set up the quiz. Then we add the questions. Now, if you have an exam view uh, database with your course, please come to me and I can import for you, show you how to import all the questions for your entire exam view database into your Moodle course so that you can use them without making any questions. I have tons of questions in my Moodle course. They all started with me importing them all from an exam view database. So that's the first thing. If you've got that, please um, talk to me and I will help you import them into your class. Because if you have an exam uh, view database, all I have to do now is go edit quiz and add questions. Okay, I would add them from my question bank, which they would all be there. There are no questions in this course. I'm going to have to show you how to add questions. So I'm back here um, on the quiz. I go to edit quiz, and this is where I say what the grade is worth. It's worth 50 points. It's worth 100 points. That's where I have to put that in, and this is where I tell it to shuffle all the questions. Now, every student in my class is going to get randomly a different order of test, so I don't have two different test versions. If I've got eight students in my class, I have eight different test versions. The downside, the only downside of that is if they say, hey, I've got a problem with question number one, that means nothing because their question one is not the same as their question one. They're all different. Uh, however, I can pull up their um, test online at my desk and I can see what question number one is to them. So, I'm making a, a test and I have to add some questions. So I'm gonna hit add, new question. Now, if I had my exam view, I'd be able to do from question bank and add new question. And I have all these different options 
of questions to me, and I'm only going to show you three of them today. I'm going to start with the easiest, true, false. I'm going to hit add. And it says, what category do you want it to go in? Okay, I'm going to leave it in default, but just like we had to make categories for our grade book, we should make categories for our class. Because I didn't when I first started, and I ended up with hundreds of questions in one big, huge group, and it made it really, really difficult for me. So I'm going to go and add a question. Question name. There's an asterisk there. I have to put it in there. Nobody sees this but me. So I'm going to make it 1-1, meaning chapter 1, indicator number 1, because I organized mine by indicator. That, again, they don't see that. I'm going to say down here. It's a true-false question. So the correct answer is false. All I do on true false is say whether it's true, whether what the correct answer is. I don't need to fill anything else out. And this is what confuses teachers. They see all these boxes. I don't need to fill anything else out. I'm done. I just say the question or the statement, what, what, whether the right one's true or false, and I hit save changes, and I'm done. If I want to see what that looks like, I can hit the little eyeglass over here, and this is where they see a computer is a small furry animal. Select one, true, false. Okay, if I want to see whether I did the right one, I can get filled with correct answer. Is that false? Yes, that's false. Okay, I've got my question set up right. That's all there is for a true false. It's pretty easy. I'm going to add one for a multiple choice now. We click add and new question, and now we're going to add a multiple choice. Multiple choices are a little more confusing. I'm going to go ahead and say one, one. What is a computer again because it's hitting the same area which question mark okay so uh, again I can add pictures if I want to I've got the full Moodle text box and I'm gonna show you something right now while I'm here um, which I suggest for students with IEP student or teachers with IEP students what if I want them to read this question to them? I can hit the down arrow and I hit the microphone right here. And I can record myself doing this question for my students. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to hit start recording and I'm going to read that, this question. Which one of these best describes a computer? That's it. I can hear if it worked. Which one of these best describes Okay, then I'm going to hit attach recording. That is now right underneath that. So when I've got students on an IEP with reading uh, limitations, they don't have to read. They can just hit play. Yes, all my students see that, but uh, I will tell you that not a lot of students play that that don't need it played for them. Okay, uh, I'm going to point out something new here. Default points. When I add this to question to a quiz or a test, what is the relative point value? And I left the true false at a one. I make multiple choices worth more than true or false. So I change that to a two. So my multiple choice questions are weighted twice as much as my true false. Uh, that's what default points is. I can change it somewhere else in the quiz as well. Um, so by default, one or multiple answers, only one answer is correct on this. So I'm going to enter as many choices as I want to. Now, it has five blanks, and I can add more and more and more. Uh, boy, that'd be mean if I did that, but I could. So I'm going to go ahead and add one of my choices up here. Oh, that's a terrible definition of a computer. But I did say which one best describes a computer. So we're going to call that the right answer, and it's worth 100%. One of these has to be worth 100%. I can give partial credit for stuff. I could say device and say, oh, they didn't say the whole thing. They get 25% of it right by picking that one. Um, by the way, by default, it's shuffled, which means all that not only is my are my students getting them in a different order, A is not A, B is not B, C is not C, D is not D to the student next to me, even if we were on the same question, because it shuffles the choices as well. Okay. 
Okay, I'm only going to give three options. That's all the three. I can do more. They only show up if I fill them out. Uh, these feedbacks are information that's kind of advanced, but it's information they get when they choose that answer. Uh, like you could say close, but no cigar. Um, or nope, or great job. You can put that feedback in there if you wanted to for your students. Okay, that's it. I'm going to hit save changes. And now I've got that one. And this is what it looks like when they see it. Which one of these best describes the computer? Which one of these? And they get to select one of those. And every time it opens up, these are in a different order. If I want to check the answer, I can hit fill with the correct answer. And there we go. Now, some of you are already saying, well, they can read this. But now this is a long answer. They have to read that as well. I can put that as red as well. So I'm going to go back into it. By the way, these icons here show what kind of question it is. The dot dot is true false. The dot with line, dot three dots with lines is multiple choice. And oops, if I click on there, I go back in here. Now I can, because this is a Moodle box with the same editing. By the way, I can drag this down to make it a big box. Um, I can do the same thing. I can put the put I put my cursor down here I, anyway I can put it down here I can read the answer here as well so I'm gonna move it up there an electronic device that computes things I can check it an electronic device that computes things. and I can attach it and I can go through all of my choices down here okay so now this looks like this and now they can play all the different options as well as read them. Uh, and this is great for those students, like I said, on an IEP for reading. So that is that is multiple choice. I'm going to show you another option for multiple choice. So I'm going to add a new question and say multiple choice again. So now I'm going to make it two again. It's double weighted. But now down here, there's not going to be one possible answer there's going to be multiple parts of possible answers because i'm going to say they have to add up to 100 so i'm going to say two right ones and make them each worth 50 percent those are the two right ones they have to check memory and processor or parts of the computer and then i'm going to do it down to choice three okay now here's the issue is that I've got two right ones and two wrong ones. What happens if they check them all right now? They get 100%. So I have to say for the wrong ones, they get negative points. So I give them negative 50 on the wrong ones and positive 50 on the right ones. And now I'm going to save changes. So what is a computer? It looks like this. Now they can check multiple things. If they check them all, they get zero. If they check two right and one wrong, they get 50% because this one did minus and this did plus and this did plus. If they do that and get one right and one wrong, they got a zero. Uh, and you need to explain that to your kids if you're going to do multiple choice, multiple ones. Uh, and you can see the difference. This is boxes. And on this one, it's circles. You can't you can't pick multiple ones. It keeps unpicking the previous one on the circles. So that's multiple choice. And your two options of multiple choice are multiple choice, choose one, multiple choice, choose many. And the last kind that I'm going to go over today of a new question for level one is matching. And I'm going to add up here and I'm going to one to one. Match. Okay, match the parts with the definition. Whatever. Uh, default points. I do more for matching than I do for multiple choice. I raise it up again to three. You could do whatever you want to. You can make them all worth the same. You can weigh them like I do. That's up to you. Okay, so all I do is put um, options, answers, options, answers, options, answers. I can do more and more and more. I can have as many as I want, and I can have more op answers than I have options. So um, just so you know, on these, the first one is a Moodle text box. The second one is a simple text box, which means I can add reading in here, but I can't in here. I can add pictures in here, but I can't in here. So I could have things like CPU here 
and I can have a picture of a CPU right here. So I've got pictures alongside parts. And by the way, if I wanted to make all the pictures the same side, I could just click on them and say, I'm going to make them all on one side, 100. If I wanted to make it kind of relatively the same, I'm just double clicking on it and saying the one side's 100 and it's automatically changing the side of the other one so right now i've got and here let's 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 take a look at this right now match the parts so it comes up and they've got a little drop down and they have to go through and say what is what on this and i've got three pictures and i've got three options in the drop down and so when i look at this one you can see that whatever is up here is on the left and whatever's up here is here on the right and I can have more options. So if I want to make it more confusing, I don't add more things up here. I add things down here. Okay, so now if I go back to my question and take a look at it, there's only three things, but there are four options. I could have any number of options. I'm sure there's a limit, but I've never hit it. Um, next to my things to make it so that it's not just a simple elimination they actually have to know so i might want to add one extra or two extra things on the answers side so there's more drop downs than there are things to match it with that's just something you can do on multiple choice i'm sorry i'm matching that is the last matching one and i'm gonna um and we're finished basically with quizzes now we're going to go to the question bank. I'm going to show you how to add a category. So I'm going to go to question bank. And right now I've got these questions in my um, class, this example class. I'm going to go to categories. And right now there are no categories in example class. These all show up for me because I'm the administrator. I apologize. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom and say I'm going to make a category called chapter one that's it and i'm going to add a category and i'm going to take all my questions and i'm going to add them to chapter one so i'm going to take all these and i'm going to say move to chapter one then i'm going to hit the move to button so now all these are in chapter one and i would have i'm going to go to add another category down here all the way at the bottom you you won't see all that mess I'm going to add inside of example class. That's what the name of this class is. Inside of there, I'm going to add a category called chapter two. I'm going to add one and you can see, oops, I put it up the wrong place. That was supposed to be down here. Oh, this one. Oh, there we go. So you can see I've got chapter one and chapter two. I can add another one if I want to called chapter three and also i want to under the course oh no i think i've got that wrong i have to look it up there yep i got it wrong this goes over there and i'm going to move it down and i know this looks crazy but now i got a chapter one a chapter two and chapter three so if i'm in a quit quiz um, and I go to add, I can say from the question bank now and say, you know what, I want the questions from chapter four or chapter one. And now I'll see all the chapter one questions. And when I'm building one in chapter two, I'll see the chapter two questions and so on and so forth. Again, if you have exam view or any other question database, um, most likely we can import it into Moodle. It has multiple different versions that you could import questions from, and they automatically put it into the same chapters that they are in your class. Let's go take a look. I just did that for Mr. Wendell in his computer class. So if we go to his question bank and to his questions, uh, if we pull down, look, he's got 136 questions in chapter one, uh 81 in chapter 12 13 14 97 so if we go there he's got all these questions already imported for him and you can see what kind they automatically default to be ordered by type so these are these are 
uh, the different types and then you could order them by question name if you wanted to so now if it's all in alphabetical order uh, and he can make a quiz and just say hey I want to use that one and that one and that one and boom Bob's your uncle it throws it into there so if you've got a question bank that's a great way to get started uh, with Moodle quizzes that is pretty much it I want to show you the big advantage of doing quizzes with Moodle. Number one, it obviously it grades itself for you and automatically puts it in your grade book and that's great. That saves you tons of time. Uh, however, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my Moodle course. So here's my Moodle course. Uh, and I have these are all short cycle assessments that I do inside my class while I'm teaching my class. And those short cycle assessments are all just three to five questions that I use as I'm teaching to stop and, and make students go and do an, do an activity, uh, which for instance, let's go ahead and pop the one. I'll just pick this one. So this one says, attend the class on the CTBU socket and read the second section of the chapter four book. So they're going to go to here. This is the lecture from the class, but they're supposed to have seen this lecture. That's what we just did in the class and then read this and this um, and they've got an additional video that they're watching as part of this activity and then when they're done they go in and take the quiz when they take the quiz i immediately have data on how my students did on this quiz and let's go and take a look at what that data looks like okay as a teacher i see this i can go to results and i can go to statistics and I'm just gonna pick one class. Let's pick this class on the statistics and I'm gonna pick it on the first attempt. So after I got done teaching this and they immediately took the quiz, how did they do on the questions? And on these particular questions, 100%, 100%, this is a terrible example because I must have done a fantastic job um, because it's not normally like this on the first attempt. Normally on the first attempt, it's low and I will pick the wrong one and I will have to reteach something and then later on I'll look at the last attempt and see or the second attempt or whatever uh, and see how did things change after I re-instructed and gave them the chance to do that one again. I'm going to find a bad one for you. Okay here's a better example of what I'm talking about. When the students first took this uh, assessment you can see I some students understood this question but then I had 50 37 62 56 gives me the chance to get that formative data back to see what I need to go over again and then I can go review the information reteach information as required and then have them take the same assessment again uh, and see how they did later so we went how to, oh, there we go we went from 30s to 50s to now 87 to 100 uh, which is obviously where I'd like to be before I move forward with my instruction on a particular area so that's one of the things that's great about uh, the middle quiz the other qu thing is not just this on instruction but also on when I'm done with the summative part what did I miss because I say I missed it if less than 50% of the students had an understanding of the material. So let's go to another one. I'm gonna to go to the chapter three because I know it's always a hard one for students. I'm gonna to go to that one and open that one up. That is, and I'm gonna to go to results and I'm gonna to go to statistics and I'm gonna go down here on this side now. Now, as I go through here, first of all, like I said, I have my indicators at the front. So I know what indicators are what. On indicator eight, 50%. Ah, did great, did great. Indicator three on this one, 50%. Did pretty good. Ah, indicator five, 60%. So there are certain questions that I'm going to go back over immediately after taking the assessment. I don't need to go over the ones that are 100%, 90 plus percent, right? But on this one, that less or that half of the students got wrong, I need to go over this question again. And I need to find out what and why did half the students get this question wrong. So I'm going to read back through it. I'm going to do it with my students. I'm going to talk to my students as the review of this 
test before moving forward to make sure we know what we did wrong and maybe I have to spend another day re-instructing on a particular thing because the last thing I want to do is march forward without my students having the understanding they need as we progress through the course. That's something that I can't do with a paper test. I can't know how many students missed every single question on a paper test in a particular room without spending an enormous amount of time uh, like I can using the Moodle quiz module for my assessments, which is why I use them for almost everything. And you can see I've got fill in the blank. I've got essay. I've got matching uh, questions. I've got ones where they have to go and label stuff. They have to label which one of these is the mother connection, which one's the hard drive connection. Um, so there are all kinds of questions that we can use, and the Moodle quiz module is fantastic for that. And we're done with the three activities that are available for level one teacher. Assignments you're going to use all the time, feedback kind of a bonus, and quizzes hopefully you use because in the end it will make your life way easier to use the Moodle quiz module. And that's it for level one activities.